We are at the beginning of summer here in Gippsland, Australia. Although some of the days we have had recently would fool you into thinking we were at the end of autumn. As the year draws to a close, I need to start thinking about planting out my pumpkins. I'm much later than most people in my state. But I try not to worry as I watch other gardeners who plant theirs out several months ago. Instead, I rest assured that I know the rhythms of my own garden. I know that these plants thrive in the heat, something that we haven't had much of yet. The green manure we planted three months ago has been chopped and dropped. I like to chop it just before flowering, but we unfortunately miss that by only a week. This crop was planted after the pigs cleaned up this space after last year's harvest, making light work of the foliage, mist or damaged fruit, and weeds that started to invade my garden. The seeds we planted were inoculated with a symbiotic bacteria helping them fix nitrogen from the air into the soil with their roots. The chopped foliage has added some much needed organic matter to the silty soil I have to work with. I will leave this on top to act as a mulch for the pumpkins which will grow here. I did start some of my more precious seeds in my hothouse so that they could get a head start on the slugs and snails. I feel like they have been so prolific this year, maybe because of all the rain we have been having. The rest of the seeds I will be direct sowing. I like to plant many varieties but sadly this will be the last year I do this. I enjoy the varied shapes and sizes come harvest time and late autumn once the heavy frosts have hit, curing them for storage for the year to come. I won't be saving my own seed, but I intend to next year. I have planted too many varieties. I hope to use up all of my surplus seed this year and start afresh next. If I plant just two pumpkin varieties and my zucchini and cucumbers, I will be able to save the seeds from both my pumpkins, but unfortunately not the zucchini or cucumbers. It will be sad not to have the variety like I will have this year. Seed saving is the next step for me in my self-sufficient journey. How can I be self-sufficient if I need to rely on seed companies to provide me with the seed I need to grow my own food? For a seed to cross-pollinate, they not only have to be in the same genus, but also the same species. Pumpkins, squash, zucchini and cucumbers all belong to the Kirkabitta family. But within this family, there are four species. C. maxima, C. pepo, C. muscata and C. mixta. If you grow one variety from each species of the Kirkabitta family, your seeds will remain pure. So next year, I envision to only grow butternuts and Queensland blues along with my cucumbers and zucchinis. I like to plant three seeds per hole as insurance against mist germination, birds, rodents or hungry nocturnal creatures. From here, I will leave them to do their own things, only watering on days of extreme heat. Some of the seeds I planted last week have started to spring to life and soon this area will be a sea of green again. I'm still working my way through last year's pumpkins. Today is the coolest day for a while. So we have lit our wood-fired oven for the last time this year. While the stove is on warming the house holds water, I'll be utilising the heat it will generate to cook a pot of hearty curried pumpkin soup. First I need to steam some pumpkins so I can puree it. I need to remove the skins and seed and cut it into chunks.
While that is simmering away, I go and find an onion from my garden. These are starting to put on bulb growth and I look forward to harvesting them all so I can plant some more carrots in this bed. I finally slice the onion and saute it in my favourite clay pot with some homemade butter. To this I add some curry powder. Once I roast and temper the spices in the hot oil, I will add my coconut cream powder and hot water. I purchase my coconut milk and cream like this not only to save space in my cupboards, but to reduce my waste. But you want to make sure it is pure coconut powder with no added dairy products, thickeners, fillers or emulsifiers. I'll then add some frica, an ancient wheat grain, which is harvested green and young. After harvest, the grains are roasted in an open fire where the chaff gets burned off. The resulting grain is chewy and nutty and a little bit smoky. It's a perfect addition to this soup. By this stage, I can puree the pumpkin, which I will then add to the spices, coconut milk and grains. I will taste it and adjust the seasoning if need be. I like to let this slowly simmer for a few hours before serving with crusty bread and lashings of butter. Such a hearty vegetarian meal made vegan by omitting the butter for coconut oil. Sometimes it is the simple things, like feeding my family in this way. It brings so much joy knowing they are eating the best food I can provide, even if the little ones grumble with all the veggies I serve. This is the reason we moved out here, to be playing in the dirt all day long instead of using technology and to have the ability to grow all our own food and not rely on others to do that for us. This is our self-sufficient dream.